Welcome everybody to the Cal's Ambassador Student Experience Panel. My name is Mikaela Materovatnik, I go by Mika, and I'm originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina, but now I live in Washington, DC. I'm a senior in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, and I'm majoring in Biological Sciences. So we're going to briefly introduce the other Cal's Ambassadors. My name is Amina Tariq City Bay. I'm from Hudson Valley, New York. I'm a senior in CALS and I'm double majoring in environmental science and communications. Hi everyone, my name is Taylor Gilbert. I am from Union Springs, New York, which is a small town about 40 minutes north of campus right off of Cuba Lake. I am a senior in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. I am an animal science major with a business minor in dairy management concentration. Everyone, my name is Danny Marr. Uh, I'm a senior in CALS. I'm from Ardsley, New York, which is in Westchester County. Um, and I am studying communication with minors in English, leadership, and media studies. So to begin, uh, to jump straight into the questions, um, what is your academic focus and why is your major at CALS a great fit for you? So Taylor, if you want to start us off. Sure. So as I mentioned before, I have a dairy management concentration. I come from a first generation dairy farm in Cuyahoga County. And although I do not see myself going to our home farm, I do wanna be involved in the industry. And CALS has been a great fit for me because I've been able to alter my schedule and take classes that have helped me better understand the information and science behind how farmers are able to take great care of their animals and environment while producing more milk to feed more mouths with a less overall impact. So the opportunities and lessons I've taken away these last three years are unmatched to a lot of the other schools I had looked at previously. Amina? So I'm a double major in environmental science and communications. And one of the benefits of being able to double major in CALS is the opportunity to study both soft sciences and hard sciences. So coming in, I really knew I had a passion for science and understanding um, sustainability from a more scientific perspective. But personally, um, as someone who's always been socially engaged, I knew it was important that I also wanted to be able to apply that science in the real world. Um, and so by combining um, environmental science and communications, I was able to kind of have the best of both worlds um, and um, being able to apply um, different types of sciences. So um, I said before my major is communication, uh, similar to Amina. Um, my focus areas within the major are um, media communication and persuasion social influence. So um, my major, I'm really kind of studying how, um, let's say like human society, we create meaning through different kind of media, through symbols, through communication in general. Um, and I'm really interested in how that like builds community overall. Um, and I think it's a great fit at Cornell because the the research that goes on here, the studies they do, it's so relevant. Like we talked about social media algorithms, which I think I can't really find anywhere else, which I love. And so lastly, my academic focus. So I said that I concentrate in genetics, genomics and development, um, but I've also taken advantage of a lot of the computational biology classes at Cornell. So I consider those two to be my focuses in the biology major. So, um, what I love about the biological sciences major at Cornell is that it not only allows you to focus on some of the things that you find most interesting in biology, those questions that make you really excited, um, but it also gives you a lot of flexibility around um, what, you, what you can explore within the major, um, as well as flexibility to take courses outside um, of the major and have a sort of uh, a holistic, um, and well-rounded education. Um, and so um, what I love specifically about the major is that it allows you to have a solid base of the hard sciences. So it, it also encourages you to love those other sciences. So organic chemistry in chemistry and then physics and biology. Um, and, and what's great about the bio major as well is that it's so large. And so there's so many classes um, that have been tailored to sort of broad um, biology concepts as well as some niche ones. So it's, it's great to be able to explore. And there's also a lot of advising because it's such a large major. So um, moving on to question number two, 
Beyond your major, how are you taking advantage of the breadth of CALS and Cornell and the flexibility of CALS? So to start us off, uh, I can, I'm, I'm gonna start with this one. So um, uh, I, I briefly talked about the flexibility of the bio major. Um, and I think um, specifically, it has been the distribution requirements that CALS has um, that allows that have allowed me to do that. So um, it's not too many classes. So you're allowed, you're really encouraged to get pretty um, specific within your interests. Um, and but as I said before, it allows you to to be a well-rounded student. Um, so, Danny. Um, like I said before, I have three minors, uh, which sounds like a lot, but with cows being so flexible and my major being so flexible, it's been very easy. Um, to pick up those three minors, as well as um, my major used to require that you either do like an outside concentration of like four different classes, or that you, you know, pick up a minor. So I have been really lucky that I've been able to pursue English, which is like a long time passion of mine. I loved English in high school, reading books, analyzing them has been amazing for me growing up. Um, media studies, because that goes right in hand, hand in hand with my um, focus area within my major being media communication. I love studying how you know social media, media in general, the newspaper industry, the radio industry, how that's like shaped society, and how we you know uh, find out things from it, how we process meaning, how we like uh, coalesce over it. So all these kind of things are really interesting to me. And then I picked up a leadership minor because um, throughout my time here, I also got involved with the intergroup dialogue project, uh, which is like my absolute favorite time commitment on campus. I spend a lot of time teaching classes about. Um, communicating across difference, uh, social identities, and all these other uh, great diversity and inclusion initiatives. So through that, I kind of was able to see that, oh, I, I'm very attuned to this leadership minor, and I've been taking all these classes at home, my leadership skills, and leadership skills since then. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Dani. Amina? So in terms of the breadth of Cal's and Cornell, one of the most rewarding experiences I've had um, was during my junior year where I spent a semester um, in DC with Cornell and Washington. Um, and in the program, um, students are required to take full credit hours as well as work and internship. Um, and during that experience, um, one of my classes I took was an inquiry class um, where we had a focus on doing research on a specific issue throughout the whole entire semester and then do a, pol a policy proposal for it. So I focus on issues uh, related to environmental racism. Um, and then when I returned back from um, DC um, next semester, I really wanted to make sure the classes I took in DC, which were more geared towards um, you know, government majors or students who are in arts and sciences, um, I still wanted to make sure I was able to benefit from those classes. So I was able to work with the environmental science department and have one of the classes um, where I did that research apply for an environmental science class um, that was focused on policy analysis, um, which we're kind of doing the same exact thing um, where we had to focus on a research project. And so it was really um, cool that I was able to transfer um, that credit into um, fulfilling my requirements for CALS. And it just shows to show how transferable um, all the um, learning applications from each colleges are. Thank you for sharing that. And Taylor? Yeah, so one thing I've really valued with my time at CALS is the sheer flexibility. I've been able to add a minor and concentration pretty easily and take on other classes for fun. I was able to take the Wines and Vines class here, which is pretty popular. And I also took a class with, partnered with students from India and China. And for me, that class was particularly valuable because it was the semester before I went to China for a couple of weeks. So it kind of gave me a better understanding and perspective going in, definitely gave me a little edge. Great, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. And now we're moving on to question number three. So at CALS, we believe that hands-on experience and real life application are a critical part um, of the learning process, as well as our mission to be purpose-driven. What experiences with research, internships, study abroad, or public service have played an important role in your Cornell CALS education? So I know you've talked a little bit about this, but maybe we can expand a little bit. I mean, you can go first. Sure, so like I mentioned, I attended the Cornell Washington program. 
Um, but through CALS, some other really cool experience that I've had um, was the opportunity to intern with the Environmental Defense Fund um, for one summer. And also through support from the department, I was able to find my internship in DC, where I worked with the United Nations Foundation. Um, but when it comes to my experiences um, and being able to have real life applications, one of my favorite um, experiences is my field biology courses, which is a requirement for environmental science. Um, where we basically walk around campus and look at trees. <laughs> um, but it was one of my favorite classes um, and being able to go to different um, forests and then do um, different types of more hard science um, analysis of the environment. It was so much fun. And I remember one time walking past a friend and they're like, oh, hey, and I'm like, sorry, I'm in class. <laughs> but it just goes to show how um, not class, the classes won't always be in a classroom. And I really enjoyed the opportunity where I was taking really hard classes to be able to go outside and connect with nature and um, have the educational experience. That's great. And there's so many amazing places to, to explore around the Cornell campus. Um, so it's an amazing place to be just geographically. So Taylor? Yeah, so I have absolutely loved my time here at Cornell, but what I really have valued is the opportunities I've had through Cornell to go abroad. Since my freshman year, I think I've been to over 10 new countries, mostly across Europe, some into Asia, and these experiences has taught me things you really can't learn in a classroom, and I can't wait for the next adventure on that. But um, on the Cornell campus, we also have had a lot of hands-on experiences in labs. We go to the Cornell Teaching Dairy. Um, Ezra Farm is right on campus. So there's a lot of hands-on experience there, working with animals. Um, on the internship side, I have had three different internship experiences so far, which have given me a different perspective in varying parts of the industry I intend to be a part of. So these have been of true value for me, getting into the real world and being able to network and connect with people beyond the Ithaca campus. Great, and Danny? The, the two biggest things that come to mind when I get asked this question, I think about my internship in the summer after my sophomore year as an advertising and public relations intern at Louis Vuitton. So um, I'm from Westchester County, New York. I was able to just, you know, take the train in. Um, and then I walked all the way up to the headquarters for North America. And it was an unreal experience. Like I got to, you know, bring celebrities clothes, like, like buy hands at their hotel. Um, I got to pack things up, ship them out. I shipped some gifts to Beyonce. That was crazy. Um, and on top of that, I got to see like never before seen clothes. Um, and I had to sign like confidentiality agreements because like I, I wasn't allowed to take any pictures. I had to actually um, stand there during some of these debuts to make sure people weren't uh, taking pictures during the press releases. Um, and for advertising, like I was able to like approve color rule outs for um, the New York Times on their Sunday ads, as well as um, I was able to talk to different magazine companies, do some research on how the advertising placements were growing, make recommendations for my SVP in terms of negotiations for the coming year. Um, and all of these things were such, you know, amazing real experiences and I loved every second of it. It gave me such like foundational work. Um, and on top of that, I also was able to attend a conference called New York Com where um, 12 students were chosen to go down to New York City. We were um, our professor drove us in a Cornell van and we were put up at a hotel in New York City and we got to go do all these like networking or industry workshops at all these different companies like Discovery, Spotify. We took a trip to ESPN in Connecticut um, and this was great for like networking, professional development and it was just a fun weekend to spend with some friends. So I don't know, I've, I've gotten to do so much here that I'm so thankful for. Great. These are all incredible experiences. And I think these are very good reflections of what Cornell students are able to do with the Cornell Cal's education um, with all the doors that are opened for us um, through that. So um, I'll briefly go into some of my real life applications um, of what I'm studying. So um, actually one of the reasons why I came to Cornell was because it was a world-class research institution. And I don't think I really understood what that meant until I came here and sort of um, was introduced to the research world. So I spend most of the time outside of class in my research lab in Mariana Wolfner's 
uh, reproductive genetics lab. And um, I was sort of introduced to research here um, because so many undergrads get involved uh, in research and it's something that's very encouraged here. Um, so that was my introduction to research, but um, outside of Cornell, um, I've pursued two internships, one after my freshman year and one after my sophomore year. So I was at the National Institutes of Health in the Department of Bioethics my first summer. And that was sort of very formative uh, in my desire to pursue uh, an MD PhD after Cornell, uh, because I was just introduced to these really cool applications of everything that I learned in class here uh, at Cornell um, and sort of made me understand what the significance of what I was working uh, or what I was studying in class at Cornell. So that was just very cool to see and very amazing to be able to, as everyone, uh, as all of my peers have said, um, sort of be able to network and understand why it is that we're studying what we're studying. So, and then my second summer, I was able to complete a program called Gateway to the Laboratory Program at Weill Cornell Medical College at uh, the Cornell Medical School. Um, and that introduced me to a whole new field of research, computational biology, and which was the inspiration for taking courses in computer science um, as of my junior year at Cornell. So again, sort of emphasis on uh, the opportunities to explore areas and the flexibility that Cal gives you to uh, take courses that you're interested in outside of your major as well. And then I wanted to briefly cover an experiential uh, learning opportunity that I had as part of Cornell Cal's. So I was able to, as part of my um, evolution course uh, in biology, um, to go to Galapagos and learn about evolution in the place where it all, where the study of uh, evolution basically just began. Um, and so it was able to um, teach me how important it is to have uh, the evolutionary perspective lens as, as one studies biology. It actually introduced me to one of the professors that was very um, foundational in my experience at Cornell um, and sort of emphasized that Cornell professors are there to teach you and they're real people and they're really cool. Um, and so it was sort of, it sort of bridged that gap um, where I was just really intimidated by professors um, and allowed me to see um, how amazing the professors at Cornell are. So that leads us to question number four, which is what clubs, organizations, or extracurricular experiences are you involved with that have been meaningful to you? So I'm gonna begin with this one. Uh, so the two experiences that I wanted to, to mention was the first is the year's peer counseling program. So basically it's, it's a program where they teach you how to listen empathetically to your peers. Um, and it's sort of a way to support the Cornell community from the bottom up sort of students supporting students. And so that has been very meaningful to me, have, have taught me um, so many skills um, as well as um, allows me to give back to my community and be there for uh, my fellow students. Um, and then also, I'm the co-president of the Society for Advancement of Chicanos, Hispanics, and Native Americans in Science, um, also known as SACNAS. And so this organization um, has introduced me to a lot of graduate students uh, and has had uh, multiple opportunities for informal mentoring um, and also outreach into the Cornell and Ithaca community um, through volunteer experiences, getting people, uh, getting young uh, little people um, excited about science um, and also trying to increase diversity in STEM. So next is Taylor. The club that has been most meaningful to me, hands down, has been the Dairy Science Club. With them, I have been able to go on trips, both domestic and international, and really understand how the dairy industry is changing beyond the U.S. and being able to apply um, certain practices we use in the U.S. to Italy or China or Ireland and vice versa. With the club, we also listen to industry professionals, and we even have a sale each year where we take care of heifers and cows, about 80 of them, give or take, right on campus at the building behind the dairy bar. So that um, club has introduced me to an immense amount of opportunity over these last few years. 
Great. And Amina? Throughout my four years in CALS, I've been involved with a number of different organizations. This year, I'm serving on the Student Advisory Council to the Dean for the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences. And I'm also serving as Student Director for the CALS, um, the CALS Alumni Association. Um, I've also had the opportunity to serve as a columnist on the Cornell Daily Sun, serving on um, the class councils, student assembly. But I think the most meaningful um, organization experience I've had was creating my own. Um, and this was um, working with my friends to create the Minorities in Agricultural Natural Resources and Related Sciences, otherwise known as MANERS. Um, and we were able to um, reach out to a whole bunch of minorities doing field research in natural resources and um, have um, those people come in and speak to minority students in CALS. And I think it was really important to be able to see um, people who look like you studying the field that you're going in and also um, having them come in and give advice to um, incoming students. And so to be able to make that connection for um, the campus was a really exciting opportunity um, that me and my friends were able to pursue. And I think that also just goes to show that if there's an interest that students have, you have the ability to bring it to the campus. If, it's, if something's not here already, um, students have the power to um, create what they want to see on campus. And last but not least, Danny. So I am the president or chair of CALS Ambassadors. So um, I get to oversee this lovely group of people right here. We're all here for this panel. Um, I'm also the president of the Communication Student Advisory Board. So um, it's a bunch of students within the major who are trying to build a sense of community across the department. So we kind of liaise between like um, alumni, professors, students, and that's a really fun experience. I'm also a sitter for Guiding Eyes for the Blind. So actually right after the Zoom, I'm gonna go pick up a dog up the street and keep her for about an hour and a half, um, do some training with her, walk her around. Um, on top of that, I also am a facilitator for the Intergroup Dialogue Project. So this is my biggest time commitment on campus where I teach that class, Education 2610, um, Intergroup Dialogue Project, where we really get to sit down and it's like 15 students um, with like three co-facilitators at the moment. Um, and we just talk about social identity, um, communicating across difference, and ways we can, you know, enact real social change, diversity, and inclusion on campus. So moving on to question number five, where and how have you found your people and sense of community at Cornell? So Danny, you can start us off. Oh wow! So I've I'm a pretty extroverted person, so I find community almost everywhere I go. <laughs> like I'm very, I don't know, it's, I'm very agreeable. I love to talk to people, so. For me, it's it's finding my friends or making friends, and then I see them everywhere on campus. I my the clubs I'm in, my major, my major is very uh, community based, so I have friends in my major. And they have just contributed so much to my experience here at Cornell, and they're the people that keep me going. They're my support system when I'm having a hard day. I know I can rely on them. That's awesome to hear, Amina. So. I kind of found my community at Cornell starting the summer before my freshman year um, as an HOP student, where I spent the summer with about 200 other students on campus um, for six weeks, um, taking classes, and we had such a fun time. Um, I met almost all my closest friends during PSP and also through the HOP program. Um, but also coming into um, Cornell, I was able to find um, even a broader sense of my community, not only through the student clubs and organizations, but also through um, different things like program housing. My freshman year, I lived in Ujima Residential Hall, which is um, for students of the Pan-African diaspora. Um, and it was really important for me to have a sense of home my freshman year, and Ujima gave me that. Um, and so having that community centered around Ujma was really convenient also because people were always in and out of the building. So it was really lively and, and I felt like it was really easy for me to um, find um, and access my community on campus. Awesome. And Taylor? Yeah, so I believe that Cornell and Cal's can truly be as big or as small as you want to make it. Personally, I have found a lot of my friends in both my major, animal science and the dairy science club here on campus. The best thing I would suggest to do is join any and every club that interests you. You're gonna meet all sorts of new people here at Cornell all the time. And it's great to have that exposure. Although things may look a little different right now, there are still ways to reach out and find people with both similar and different interests from yourself. 
Great. So moving on to question six, we all agree that it's so important to take advantage of the support resources at Cornell. So what have you found to be your go-to places for support? So I'm gonna start with that. I have three things that I wanna mention for this because I feel like there's just so much support that's offered for Cornell students. And, and I truly think this is not an individual endeavor, your college experience. I think it really has to do with the support that you have, the support systems that you have, because it, it can be a challenging time. We're all growing so much during this time. Um, and so it's really good to have support coming from all different uh, places. So the first, I cannot fail to mention the Cal Student Services. So um, even before I stepped foot on campus, I was in contact with them, um, asking to be put into contact with professors to just see like what kind of environment, um, learning environment Cornell had even before arriving. And everyone was so nice. And that was actually one of the reasons why I ended up choosing Cornell, because I knew that I would, I would feel supported and I would have um, the kind of a, resources that I was looking to have in a college experience. Um, but during my time here, I've used Cal Student Services for resume critiques, um, and most recently um, for interview preparation for my gap year opportunity, um, which has been invaluable. Uh, actually, funny, funny story, um, the day of, of this very uh, big interview that I had, um, one of the Cal Student Services uh, advisors emailed me and was just like cheerleading me and um, just wishing me best of luck. Um, and so that comes to show sort of like how personal um, the, the student services is at Cal's. Um, and obviously I you know, emailed her a thank you after for all the help that she gave me. So Lori, shout out to you. <laughs> um, secondly, I wanted to mention the Learning Strategy Center. Um, I think as being a Cornell student, um, it's important to recognize that you can't do everything alone. And so sort of um, putting your pride aside and um, asking for help for your classes has been the recipe for success for me in my science courses. Um, and so there's so many resources for academic help. Yes, the classes are challenging, but there's always help um, for you, um, if you if you seek it out. And lastly, I wanted to mention um, Cornell CAPS. So this is the, the mental health service as part of the Cornell A Health Services. Um, and I think Cornell has been improving um, their accessibility to mental health resources. I think it's very important to talk about um, because mental health <laughs> is as important as just your general health as a student. Um, and so it's important that a college campus supports um, their students on the mental health side as well as the academic side. So I wanted to make sure to mention that. Um, so next um, we have Taylor. Yeah, so there are so many different resources available both to students and staff here at Cornell. For me, I have really relied on my faculty advisor for advice and support. He's been awesome these last three years with anything and honestly everything I can bring to him. I would also recommend the Cal Student Services and have gone to them for resume critiques and other technical school or course issues. They are always timely in their responses and I have seen them to be a true asset. Great, and Amina, do you have anything to add? Yeah, so for me, one of the places where I found the most support is in Wadi, which is the Office of Academic Diversity Initiatives. I also worked at Wadi, so I, also, so I spent a lot of time there, but it really feels like a home. It's like one of the few places on campus where you can find someone studying math and also like blasting hip hop. <laughs> and so it was really nice to have that feeling of home. It's also home to um, HGOP, so my advisor would be there. And they also have a ton of free snacks um, and everyone there is really super supportive. But I would also say another really important resource um, when you come to Cornell are your peers. I always tell incoming freshmen, the best way to ace a class is to have at least one friend in the class. Um, so being able to network and reach out to your peers and you know, students start group chats or start meetings and stuff like that, study groups. And so being able to work with your peers um, through the academic process is gonna be the most, um, strongest support system you can have um, when you come into Cornell. Great, so we have time for one last question. Uh, so I wanted to finish this up with, how do you think that your Cornell Cal's experience 
has prepared you for your next step, either graduate school, uh, the professional world, or both? So I can start with that one. So I think that the Cornell experience has allowed me to discover my passion for discovery. I think being a research institution, um, it really has given me that uh, opportunity. Um, and we're, as undergrads, um, encouraged to play active roles in the labs here, not just doing insignificant jobs, but we're really encouraged to, to take initiative and, and really um, contribute to the lab. So that has been pretty transformative for me and has definitely shaped my um, interest to pursue an MD PhD after, um, after graduating from Cornell. Um, but also CALS has shaped a lot of important aspects of my personality. So I think being here has taught me to be a go-getter. So uh, there's so many resources at Cornell. They're not going to be served on a silver platter to you. Uh, instead, you're really taught to sort of go and get those experiences and take advantage of all those resources around you. And I think that's going to be very helpful um, in the real world. Um, and lastly, opportunities for leadership. So I think I can say now being a senior, um, thinking back as a uh, Thinking back um, to my freshman experience, sort of being advised by my student advisors or receiving advice from the CALS ambassadors, uh, but now I get a chance to, to play that role um, and sort of, um, so, it, so being in Cornell Cal sort of facilitates and encourages your growth as a person, um, as a student, and as well as a leader. Uh, and I cannot be happier uh, with my Cornell CALS experience. So um, next is Taylor. So overall, I think my biggest advantage coming out of Kells and Cornell is the information, A, and B, the people I've been exposed to. So the network I started and expanded during my time here is truly going to be an asset and something I use and grow throughout my personal um, professional career. Um, I also would say like Cornell and Cal's alumni, you can almost reach out to anybody. They're happy to help you because they've been there, they've done that. Um, so I definitely see that as a strength in moving forward. And at the end of the day, you're here, Cornell has a great education. You're gonna learn so many different things in different areas beyond the major you focus on. So I definitely feel prepared moving forward, although it's a little quicker than I would like to, but overall, great experience. That's so true. It's just gone too quickly. <laughs> Amina? I would say one of the biggest things Cal has prepared me for, for entering um, graduate school and professional world is having helped me build my work ethic. Throughout the four years, you really learn your own learning behaviors and your own working pattern and what works best for you. Um, and so you can take those tools and understand yourself better and be able to apply that into the real world. Thank you so much for mentioning that. I think, yeah, a lot is a lot is expected of students, but through trial and error, you really learn your way because everyone has different um, objectives in life and you learn to really find your style of, of learning and, and studying. So thank you for mentioning that. And, and lastly, Danny. Something for me, especially, is I hear a lot from you know, my family, from my older relatives who say, um, you know, you don't go to college to like learn these things. You go to college to learn how to think. Um, and I feel like for Cornell and Cal's, that's truly been the case for me. Cal's is so interdisciplinary. And so I've been able to take classes outside of my major. I've met so many people. I always say this, that, you know, you could talk to anybody on the street near Cal's and for five minutes and you will learn something new. And that's been the most incredible experience for me. I have come so far in terms of growth I want to say here at Cal's like I've learned so much more about other people how much more there is to the world and that my worldview can be very limited at times and I think just being open to new experiences and this idea that like there's so much to learn like I don't know it, it's it's really heightened my my curiosity and my hunger for knowledge. Thank you all for sharing your genuine experiences from Cornell Cal's and Thank you all for watching.